Um, looks like we got another question here. Um, I'm a web developer learning game development for three years by myself. Uh, I've uh, did many personal projects, but feel like it's not enough. Can you give me advice? Well, um, I guess it's just a matter of what you're trying to get out of it. Uh, what What are you not feeling like it's enough? Uh, these These personal projects have you put them out on the store, like a, some sort of a store. I'm, I'm I was assuming that they were like mobile apps, um, but have you released them? Is there some sort of large project or dream game that you want to to sort of work up to? Um, you know, everyone's journey in life, but also everyone's game development journey, you know, can be different. And I think, uh, you know, having goals in place uh, can really help guide where you go and how you advanced uh, and you advance. I mean, recently I put out that video about uh, MMOs. God, it's like every every stream I got to bring up that word. <laughs> is, is an MMO worth your trouble? And one of the key points, uh, takeaways was, sure, everyone's got that you know, dream game idea. Uh, maybe it's a, an MMO, but typically it's some large vision that you have for a game. Uh, but of course, you're going to have to have some milestones along the way. And, uh, you know, so the best thing I could say is if you're feeling like you're stalled in your development, um, try to set yourself some reasonable goals and try to achieve them. Try to do things that fit your vision like for instance you know god forbid let's say you're actually your dream is to make an mmo then and you've never explored multiplayer games maybe you should try to make a small multiplayer uh like a small personal project that's like a, a, a implementation of a multiplayer game um so yeah that'd be my advice there i mean if you've been working in game development for a while personally as a side hustle or a hobby you know set yourself some reasonable goals and try to try to see if those goals produce some sort of outcome or or, or some sort of growth that you're looking for any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the advice to improve. But I guess looking at the question, I think the more to the heart of it, more so than like what what the next steps would be, is the line that really sticks out to me is it uh, doesn't feel like enough and uh, it never will feel like enough. Hmm. Classic imposter syndrome. Everybody has point. it. Like, no matter how long you've been doing it for, no matter how many projects you do, um, everyone always feels like, that other guy must know more than I do. Must have mm -hmm. done more projects than me. Uh, I had a really fun conversation with a guy um, a couple of weeks back where he said to me that he was intimidated by the amount of experience I had on a particular project. And I laughed and I said, you know, I'm intimidated by the amount of knowledge you have on the project. <laughs> because <laughs> I genuinely, we were talking and it's like, I was pointing out stuff that he'd done, which I was impressed by that I didn't know how to do. He was saying, no, no, but you can do this stuff and I don't know how to do that. And it just, it's just an infinite cycle of people always assuming um, that the other person knows far more than they do. And it's very funny because it's everything in life is like this, right? Like if you know how to do something, it's very easy. It's like, I know how to do it. So of course it's easy. But um, until you know how to do something, you can assume infinite complexity and in how difficult the task is, right? But no matter what it is you're doing. So we're all programmers. And if you talk to anybody who's not a programmer, they're going to say, that's, that's impossible. I wouldn't even know how to do that. But you could realistically talk someone through, you know, control flow and if statements and while loops. And then, then they're going to kind of go, yeah, that makes sense. That's logically consistent. But to them, it's insurmountably large as a concept. Mm -hmm. And so you'll never feel like you've done enough projects or know enough stuff. <laughs> um, the question becomes, when is when do you let that stop bothering you? When, when do you decide, regardless of how much I know, how about I just do the thing I want to do? Mm -hmm. So I would say... Just pick whatever it is, figure out what your goal is, and aim towards it. And it's better to be 10% towards your goal than to sort of sit there in the sidelines afraid you're not good enough to do it, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think that's, you know, a sentiment that I used to feel whenever I'd go on to, like, the Unity subreddit. And you see, like, every day people are posting GIFs of their projects. And, you know, typically they're just, you know, vertical slices and of nothing that's really fleshed out. But even then you look at it and it's like, wow, what I haven't done anything, you know. But realistically, any one of those GIFs you could probably cook up in, a, in, a, in an afternoon um, because most of them don't really have a whole lot of functionality behind them other than the thing that they're showing. So, yeah, that imposter syndrome, you know, it's very common and definitely something that to this day I even I feel I mean everyone feels it and something that kind of leans into the next question quite nicely mm -hmm. is a lot of people look at a project and they sort of um they don't realize that that's a lot of jobs mm. and I use this mm. as a negative when I was talking about MMOs previously I was saying you may think you understand the full depth and breadth of a project 
but you really don't. Like, there's a lot more to learn to take a game as simple as Snake, and you could spend, if you wanted to, 20 years perfecting everything from user experience to level design to game flow to managing user expectations all sorts of different things you could just audio engineering to all sorts of stuff. You could just decide to infinite because each one of those things is potentially a craft that could last forever. And usually <laughs> games aren't made by one person. They're made by a bunch of people. And even when a game is made by one person, that's usually technically a cheat. Because if you're saying this game was made by this solo developer, yeah, but they did hire an artist or they did hire a concept artist or they did, you know, farm out the audio or buy assets. That's not a negative. That's mm. actually a positive, you know, we don't, don't try to carry everything on your shoulders. And so yeah. if you look at projects and go, well, I've never completed a full project by yourself. So yeah, but you've written enough stuff. That you've done one of the jobs. You could easily have taken the code you've written, stuff you've done, and that would be enough for a project. It's just you may not have comfort in every single level of every aspect of a game. So I wouldn't worry too much. I would say if you're worried about never completing a project, just find somebody who will fill the other side that you need. Find an artist who's like, I've never finished a project, but I don't know how to program. I will never make a project. And then say, well, I can, I, I'll never finish a project. I can't do art, but I can program. Oh, no. And the two of you will realize, hang on a second, if we both work together, <laughs> you can solve a problem. <laughs> so that, that's, that happens more often than you think it does. Um, so, yeah, just find people to work with if you're, if you're too worried about not finishing a project yourself. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you made a good point. You can work peop with people implicitly by buying their assets. <laughs> That's you're technically working pretty with pretty much artists. what it is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like well, oftentimes I'll go to the asset store and like literally um, there's a sense of pride. A lot of programmers have, or they'll say, no, no, I could make the system myself. I said, yeah, there's many, many assets I own that I could make myself or I can estimate how much would I pay myself as an hourly rate to do this job? How many hours is it going to take me between writing the code, doing the tests, verifying it works and all this kind of stuff. Or I can spend $20 on the asset store <laughs> and basically <laughs> Pay a massively subsidized rate that to have one guy work for me, so to speak, for hundreds of hours or something that would take me well, that same length of time roughly for twenty dollars because it's it's it comes down to the fact that they've done it as an asset to sell in bulk, so you're getting a, a subsidized rate for whatever it is they they work on so working on using assets and kit bashing stuff together is a skill in and of itself, you know like yeah. it's well worth accepting that you don't need to write every line of code in your own project. 